Exodus chapter 3 happens to be the scripture that we have read today. I'm about to begin a series, but I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord that he will use it to transform your life, to change your perspective, renew your mind, and cause a major shift in your life. I've been asking the Lord what exactly, listen, there's never been a year where God disrupted all of my monthly teams like this year. I have drafted what I consider to be our monthly team for this year and every month has been disrupted. The Lord said to me, he said, son, declare over my people that this will be the month of breakthroughs. If somebody's receiving that, let me have a good amen in the house of God. Breakthrough is not just in the area of money. Breakthrough has to do with going beyond or through something that stands as a barrier hitherto. Somebody will go through it this month. And if there's anything I want to talk about very quickly, is how you can overcome barriers to extraordinary success or barriers to breakthroughs. How to overcome barriers to extraordinary success. There is success and there is extraordinary success. Nobody stopped to celebrate common success. That you built a house, three bedroom flat is no news. But if you build your house in the sky, it becomes news. That you bought a fairly new tokumbo of any kind of brand, including Bugatti, it's no news. Amen. But that you manufactured your own car is news. <laughs> there are normal successes and abnormal successes. That a 25 year old girl had a baby is not news. That a 35 year old had a baby is no news. But tell me that a woman who is 50 or 51, like God did for us in this church last year, that a woman that is 51 has a child, you better pause and ponder. I want to pray in the name of Jesus that God will do for you what I call an abnormal, give to you an abnormal breakthrough. Give to you an abnormal success. I want to pray in the name of Jesus. That a life defining breakthrough. A life defining success. Will come in your way. Life continued until a man came up with the internet. Changed, he changed the entire landscape of the world. Life continued normally until a guy came out with something you call a Facebook. Changed the way we interact. In the entrepreneurial world, they call those things disruptions. When you come to alter the pattern and you change the game. And as I'm speaking in the name of Jesus, I'm praying that as you start thinking about your business, your ministry, your, your education, as you start thinking about your career, as you start thinking about your enterprise, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for myself, that God will give you a concept that is disruptive. That, that you will change the way things have been done. Man of God, you're into consulting? So, so the, consulting has not reached its peak yet. 
There is a dimension to consulting that the world is yet to see. I don't know what it is. But if somebody tarries long enough in the presence of God, you will find it. I will never forget what one of the great men of God, one of the greatest men of God, what he said. Listen to this. He said, and I quote, he said, that some of the landmark and disruptive innovations that we have seen in our world today that have been initiated by unsaved people, he said most of them were first proposed by God to believe us, but their mind couldn't handle it. Whether it's a Google, disruptive ideas. Stop going to work only to be doing the normal, normal. Where is the extra to the ordinary that you do every day? He that does the extraordinary needs not to fear retrenchment. You hear what I just said? The reason you are sending prayer points to your pastors. Pastor, please pray. They're about to retrench people in my workplace. They're about to, please, Pastor, pray that they will not retrench me. The reason you are panicking is because you know that you are not of value to that organization. Beloved, this whole thing you are looking at here, if I remove this rod, what happens here? Everything collapses. Am I correct? Can you be so valuable that if you are removed from an organization, they will never be the same again? And this I have to know. Right now, if you leave that organization, who will miss you? If you are easily replaceable, that means you are not valuable. I'm going to say that again. If you are easily replaceable anywhere, you are not valuable. The time has come to upscale your game. The time has come to stretch the frontiers of your mind. Normal thinking does not attract extraordinary income. Did I just say that now? Normal thinking does not attract extraordinary income. Anointing an empty head with oil only increases his burden. Because if you weigh your head before you pour oil on it and, and weigh it after you, after you pour oil on it, the weight will have increased. <laughs> so, and, and <laughs> God, and I, I said, Christians like oil. Oil. Pastor, my oil. <laughs> it's, like, it's like our cocaine. I Pastor, my oil. My oil. Pastor, you've not, you've not bled my oil. <laughs> my oil. <laughs> Wait in your head. Eh? Oil. See, concentrated oil on an empty head delivers no value. Concent, you see, so I, I know some of you, Pastor, Jerusalem oil. Jerusalem. See, even if you are in the factory where they produce the oil in Jerusalem and there's nothing inside your head, it was, see, <laughs> see, let me touch your neighbor say it's time to think. Look at your business and ask yourself, must it continue like this? Vous jardez déjà vu. Can I flip it around? Can I flip it around? If you study your life carefully, there's something you will have realized by now. That expenses keep rising. Am I correct? Uh oh. Because you do not regulate the forces of the market. And when will they ever come down? Will they ever come down? No. How much were we buying sugar cubes before? How much do you buy them now? How much were we paying for oil before? How much are we paying now? It will never come down. Prices will keep going high. The question is, as prices are going high, what are you doing strategically to reposition yourself and your business? 
to catch up with the competition of your days. Nobody is asleep because you are at rest. Society is in a constant dynamic state. Meaning that we are talking right now, whatever was an app you used yesterday must have been updated this morning. Opening a shop or opening a business space or even a church does not guarantee growth. Creativity and innovation drives the market now. What am I doing every day to make sure that the balance of power tilts in my favor? Nothing kills Nigerian employees. Like guaranteed income. Once you enter civil service, you enter the state, you enter into redundancy. As soon as many just know that sal- eh, you've gotten a job, eh? they'll be paying you every month. Sometimes you are paid for nothing. Just show up in the office. You, I'll be talking to some civil servants, sir, person day. Not people like you. You, know, you are very, your office, not all civil servants, realistic. Some, some civil service organizations or parastatus and ministries, they, they engage entrepreneurs. they entrepreneurial minded kind of people who are working there. But in so many other places, you hear somebody say, Pastor, I only show up at work three times in a week. Mm-hmm. And some of you are here too. Hey, but Pastor, what do you want us to do now? There's no work. There's no work. And gradually, Pastor, no problem. And what you are praying to us is... Re- is pension. Pastor, let me just spend like 20 years. I'll, get, I'll be pensionable. Pension. So you waste, you, you, you zuzu your life. Just like, <laughs> like that. Just, just meander and waste life to 20. So that you'll be sending 30,000 30, into your account every month. So to carry passport. Where they go? And they go pension office. And they go collect pension. Slap someone around and say, wake up, my friend. Wake up, wake up. Can't nonsense be that. Go collect pension. <laughs> so you have suspended creativity in anticipation of pension. You hear what I just said? You suspended your creative genius because of pension that is in, in view. Are you going to be able to handle me this month? C- can I go on, please? Are you ready for church? <laughs> and, and you know, I don't blame. I don't blame what's going on, sir. When all the people on your phone are fellow miserable, mediocre kind of employee. Hello, Sam. How are you? He's fine. He's fine. No, you've not even updated your English in the last 10 years. It's fine. It's fine. So where are you now? Are they also? Our director don't travel. So what are you going to do for office now? The man no day. Are they also? Me, are they use this at Dorilas? Are they watch movie? You never watch Isakaba. Are they wash? Eh, wash. Are they wash? Not that they watch anymore. Are they wash? English said don't they wash? <laughs> it's... Am I talking to somebody else? And you just, you just, you just wasting away, wasting life. They give you a job to do. Some of us are even employed in some places to go work, and then we get to work. And all we do is we do all that they ask us to do. She be sorry, hello sir. You put said I should only teach for one hour now. He said I should teach the syllabus that two times two is equal to four, and one times four is equal to four. So that's what I taught them. I told them exactly what you gave me. The Bible says, if all you do is what you were told to do, the Bible says, consider yourself as an unprofitable employee. Where is the extra? That they told you to do two times two, does that mean you should only do it that way? How about adding some flavor to what you do? Pastor, but they will not pay me now. Are you working for pay or for destiny? (laughs) 
So we want to look at how to break through into the world of extraordinary success. So my greatest pain is a number of young creative people who are moving into redundant institutions in our country. And these young people are being sentenced to redundancy themselves. Because the only way to kill an average Nigerian youth is to give him salary, to give him accommodation. Mistakenly, you now give him company boss. Or you now give them office boss. So you wake up in the morning, enter boss. After work, enter boss. At the end of the month, collect salary. Then go to one house somewhere, so way, 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 Lukogoma, Kuje, somewhere. But so long as there's boss, creativity shuts down. And not just young people too. I've seen a lot of adults. Give them staff car. Mature people know. Official car. They are not even hearing. Official. Meaning that it is what? They'll be hearing statement like, hey, please, have you seen my official car? It's your official car. Let me touch someone. See, pastor is talking to you. I'm okay. I need to know how many minutes. Really? Okay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so in Exodus chapter 3, the Bible introduces us to a man that God invited to do a big thing. God invited this man called Moses to go and do an extraordinary thing. God beckoned on him. God called him. Because God never calls you to give you a small dream. Please take note. God will, a big God will not call you and give you a small dream. I have never found in any page of the scripture where God called a man and what God told him to do was a small thing. Not a page. If he calls a Gideon, he speaks about a nation. Raises a Samuel, talks about a nation. Calls a Moses, talks about a nation. Calls a Joshua, it's about a nation. God thinks nations. Pastor, does that mean we should not do small things? Do small things that cumulatively results into big things. Meaning the big thing should be the picture. The small thing should be the strategy. But if the small thing becomes the end in itself. It is a worse way to expend your energy in life. So if you have been running a shop for three years. When are you going to think about expansion? You must have heard me. Is that how many of you? You know like Jesus Christ. Very, I like the guy. It would, from the beginning, he would tell his disciples, they saw this temple, I built back in three days. The Bible said it was when he rose again, they said, now we remember. Oh, is this what he meant? We're laughing with Pastor Ben. Who was, who had, which other pastor was in the office? Pastor John, right? Uh, we're laughing. I said, I said, didn't long, long, long ago, I started telling my pastor, I said, hey, come, things are, this is going to happen. Let's begin to... So they were not telling me, Pastor, you've been telling us. I said, really? The days are upon us. And all of us, we either sink or swim. You go preach. If you go die for stage, preach, die for stage. No, be let me. You will be raised back to life. Fall down. One of my pastors have preached before with blood. God can do it again. <laughs> I'm not the only one. We prayed for this season, Abby. No, no, be let me go do it. You go preach. We'll put you on the stage. You have no message. Just say, praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord, brethren. <laughs> it's coming. My message is coming. My revelation is coming. You preach. Hallelujah. God never gives you a small dream. So God called on the man called Moses. And said, Moses, I would like to give you a vision. And it's a vision of going to rescue a nation from which you come from. Please, I'd like you to follow my heart now. I'll just touch on it very quickly. 
And next week I will build up on that so we can do our thanksgiving today. God said, Moses, I want to give you a vision. And it's a big one. And he said, this vision will require that you go back. Somebody say, go back. You go back to the territory from which I brought you out from. And I want you to go back there on a rescue mission. Somebody say, rescue mission. Whenever God brings you from a place, sometimes God will anoint you to send you back to the same place. For the high priest was taken from amongst the people and he has to be sent back into the midst of the people. That is why most times the most probable way to reach out to people is to reach out to the people that speak your language. If you're a lawyer, it's most probable that the people you can reach out the most to are going to be what? Lawyers. Each one bringing after its own what, sir? Kind. It's easier for doctors to reach out to doctors. It's easier for politicians to reach out to politicians. It's easier for educators to reach out to educators. We speak the same language. So one of the things you need to really realize quickly is that if you're a doctor, you're a lawyer in this church, an engineer, God will always want to anoint you and send you back to reach out to the community from which God brought you from. By no means does that define the boundaries of your assignment, but it is usually the beginning of your assignment. <laughs> so God said, Moses, I'd like you to come over and I want you to go reach out to my people and bring them out of bondage. And Moses, immediately, sir, I'm talking about overcoming the barriers to extraordinary success. God wants you to have success. God wants you to have extraordinary success. God wants you to have the kind of success that will make men to say, this must be God. But for those kind of successes to come, there are a few things that I've come to realize reading through the pages of scriptures and going through the, the sages and the pages of scriptures. I've come to realize that there are things we must give attention to as I study Joshua, Moses, as I study Elisha and look at all those people who have done extraordinary things. I realize that before they did some of the extraordinary things that they did, God had to deal with some things in them. The things that we don't deal with will eventually deal with us. There are, there are barriers we must overcome if we're going to have extraordinary success. There, there are barriers we must overcome to accomplish extraordinary success. How many of you have big dreams here? Raise your hand. Big dreams. God has given it to you. If you don't have, let me look around you. If nobody has one, look at them. Look, just raise your hand. You have a big dream. Raise your hand. If nobody has one, look at the person, I give you my own. Just, I share my own with you. Because in life, one of the lessons you must realize so early is that those who don't have dreams will always help those who have dreams to accomplish their dreams. But those who have big dreams, when they meet with others who have big dreams, there's always a synergy. As I make yours happen, mine finds expression. And dreams are not of the same size, but every dream is of significant value. All dreams are not of the same size, but every dream has a significant value. Can I say that one more time? All dreams are not of the same size, but every dream has a significant value. Just like every part of the body is not the same size, but every part of the body contributes significantly to the, to the workings of the body. Hallelujah. <laughs> so God said to Moses, Moses, come, I want to use you. And Moses said, Lord, I'm available to you. He said, but there's a problem. And that's where the trouble began. And I will really deal with this in subsequent teachings. Moses said to God, he said, but in verse 11, Moses said to God, who am I? I, I listen, I'm having a problem here. You are telling me to go and accomplish this extraordinary thing. Of bringing an entire nation out of 400 years of captivity. You, you, you're telling me that I'm going to be the president of Nigeria. The governor of my state. You're, you're telling me that I'm going to be the senator from that constituency. You're telling me that I'm going to be the house of rep member. No, no, no. You're telling me, Lord, that I'm going to build a multinational company. No, no, no. Wait a minute. You're telling me, Lord, that I'm going to be, build a consulting firm that is going to be of international repute. I can't get it. You're telling me that I'm going to pastor a mega church. I, I can't get it. Lord, you're telling me that I'm going to have 
have a family that will be highly so I, I can't get it. <laughs> and he said, God, why are you talking about these big things when you know who I am? And here there's going to be a clash between who he knows you to be and who you think yourself to be. Because the one who gave you the dream knows who you are. He won't give you a dream he has not equipped you to accomplish. If God showed you the dream, it means God has given you what it takes to carry it out. The worst thing that can happen to anybody is what Moses expressed. We call it self-doubt. It is the greatest killer of successful people, potential successful people. Self-doubt. There are internal and external barriers in the pursuit of success. Internal and external barriers. External barriers include technological changes. External barriers include environmental factors. External barriers include sociological factors. External barriers include changing government and policies. These are some of the barriers that can stand in the way of a man. In accomplishing his dream. So many people, so many Nigerians with the change in government to the current government that we have. So many people lost their means of livelihood. Why? That's a change in government. And there are some enterprises that were doing well before. But because those who paid, because normally the entrepreneurs are the ones who sponsor the politicians. So that the politicians can get in there and enact policy to favor the entrepreneurs. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God here? So, and, and then so, so you have policies being made that favored certain sectors and certain individuals and eliminated some other people. So you began to have what to call sectoral collapse where certain sectors began to collapse and other sectors began to emerge. There used to be a sector in our country in the last administration that was a booming sector. During that period, certain sectors were not booming. But because attention is placed on those sectors now, Particularly with the possibility of checking out for corruption. Wise people know how to move now to sectors that requires less attention. Because they've not been in the news before. That becomes a new way of siphoning. Sorry, what did I just say now? Uh, that, that becomes a new place of activities. <laughs> before I receive visitation. <laughs> okay. So here's the game. There are external factors that stand in the way of accomplishing dreams. Don't be unaware. The danger that can happen to you is to think that the accomplishment of your dream will happen without oppositions and barriers. Every big dream God gives to you will be confronted with a barrier. And the first one will be external. That external barrier, like I said, includes sociological issues, relationship matters, people, human beings, tradition, culture, all of those kind of stuff. You're going to also meet with technological changes. While you are trying to enter your market with Pentium 4, already they've moved into iPad. While you're having all your big, big desktop, you just put them on your table. They say it's no more desktop people are using. Now, why you want to buy your hard drives? I was in California in April, and then I was talking about, please, sir, can I get hard drive? They say, what do you want to do with hard drive? I says, I need hard drive, like plenty gigabyte, terabyte. And the man says, sorry, sir, drive. I, sir, they don't sell, we don't find, you can't find it in California. I'm like, why, sir? He said, no, 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 sir, that you store, you have hard drives in the cloud. Muni, muni cloud, where is cloud? <laughs> cloud. So they said all this, so a young man came to our church recently and he said to me, he said, pastor, he said, I'm, um, I'm an engineer. He, he said, I'm a computer engineer. He said, I, I fix hard, hardwares. I said, so the hardwares are leaving you. <laughs> you understand? Things are shift, they are changing. So what I'm saying is that there are businesses that will literally disappear in the next five years. Huh? Okay. So for instance now, universities are shrinking already. Are you aware of that? You, conventional university, conventional school is going to shrink over time. We are seeing it booming in Nigeria. We are about to hit the peak of the boom of classrooms. Because Nigeria is still backward, technologically speaking. With the coming of a new government and proper infrastructure being placed, 
The dream of, I want to build a school, I want to start a school, that, that dream will no longer be necessary. Because from three rooms, you can actually educate so many people across the nation. How many of you know about Coursera? What are that, what are that ones again? Say it again. I listen. You dare me. You all know about that, right? As I'm talking to you right now, people are sitting there in the comfort of their homes in Nigeria and going to the University of Texas. People are schooling in Canada, Canada from their houses right now. Am I making a point? On your phones too? Fantastic. People are, and then you, because you are still analogging the way you're thinking. Papa, pray for me. I said, what's your prayer for? Papa, I've been saving my money for the last 10 years. I want to go to America. I want to go to, I want to go to Canada. To go and do what? I want to go and school. I want to go and school. So wait a minute. So, so you will now leave your job. The one that you are not guaranteed if you come back you will find. Because <laughs> it will have replaced you. Wait a minute. Are you aware that Americans don't care whether you got your degree online or downline? Actually what matters to Americans is what can you do? So why don't you sit down, save the money you're going to be living, you'll not be working because Donald Trump is waiting for you. Eyes, they are ready to deport you. You are finishing your school, they are sending you back home. And that's, that's you have sold your father's land for this purpose. The only land your great grandfather gave your father. Hoping that your father let me touch someone and say, wake up, pastor is talking to you, I'm alright, just look. Our time, man. God. <laughs> so I'll just give you a few thoughts and I'll see you next week. In fact, I, th- I think I'll continue this on Wednesday. Is that alright? Let's hit the ground on Wednesday and see what God will help us to do. Yeah. So those of you that don't always say, oh, pastor is going to continue next Sunday. We'll start next Sunday on another topic. We'll tell you, go and listen to so- so when is this message. Self-doubt. Somebody needs to get rid of that right now. God believes in you. Are you listening to me? I I said, Moses, Moses, you don't need to tell me what you did wrong in Egypt. I know. I'm omniscient. Before you did it, I knew you would do it. And Moses, I still said you are my chosen. Moses, I know you messed up. I, I saw, I was there, Moses, when you killed the guy. I was there. Moses. Before you ever killed a guy, I knew you were going to kill that guy. Moses, I've not changed my mind. You're still my man. No, no, you're still my man. I, I, I still love you so dearly. You're the one I'm going to use. Listen, you can't make me change my mind on you. Have you taught someone say to the person, God won't change his mind on you? Moses, I understand you failed, you, you messed up. I, I understand that there are too many errors in your life, too many mishappenings, mistakes, and too many. But Moses, still believe in you. I still believe in you. So Moses, here's an invitation. I want you to be the man to go on behalf of the holy God. Now that, that, that's, you see, that's why Moses naturally will find it difficult to, to comprehend. How can an unholy man like me go on a mission for a holy God? Wait, wait. Pastor, pa- Pastor Sam, you don't get it. Pastor Sam, I, I want to be holy so that the holy God can use me. No, it's in working with the holy God that you become holy. For they that walk with the wise shall become wise. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Stop trying to perfect yourself to work with the perfect God. It's in, it's in working with this perfect God that you become perfected. By the way, let me quickly announce to you, your pastor wasn't perfect. I am not still perfect. Amen. I make a lot of crazy flaws. Sometimes I look at myself, now you do that one. You know, in the house. Yeah, I'm not. But as I walk with him, as I walk with him, we behold him in the mirror. As I behold him every day, my God, I feel ashamed of myself. Was that the, why did I say that? Why did I do that? As I walk with him, God is making me better. I'm not the Sam Oye that you used to know 10, 16 years ago. I'm not yet like Christ. I'm striving every day to be like him. For we, as we behold him every day in the mirror, we have changed from one level of glory to another level of glory. Somebody shout glory in the house of God. Moses. What's the female version for Moses? Moses. 
<laughs> Moses. I'm talking to a sister here who's messed up too many times. And because you've messed up and because you failed God, you think that you no longer qualify to be used by the thrice holy God. Hear ye the words from the mouths of those who are called the apostles of the scripture. The gift and the calling of God. They are without repentance. You can only run from God. You can never hide from God. I know right now you're counting money in the bank when you're supposed to be counting souls. God has not changed his mind. And listen, God is only laughing at you. He will not kill you. Pastor Sam, if I don't answer the call of God, won't he kill me? He won't kill you. He will keep you until you answer the call. Ask the man they call Jonah. Uh, you've been running. You will only go through storms. Uh, this is what I want you to do. You're heading this way. He won't kill you. He will only make you come close to kill, to die. So, Moses I want to use you and, and, and the next thing Moses said he said who am I and I'm speaking to somebody in this house today the hand of God is upon your life and you say who am I the, the, the grace of God is upon your life the visions of God are upon your heart and you are still saying who am I self doubt you don't want to miss out on this particular subject on self-doubt I'll be expanding on this on Wednesday self-doubt you are a leader you are an entrepreneur I'm going to show you why your potentials are not unleashed and maximized self-doubt I will show you the hidden operations of self-doubt that you don't even know is at work when my eyes were open to it and by the way let me say this self-doubt is what attacks leaders not ordinary people Because the man we are talking about here is an 80 year, come on, are you here right about saying now? 80 years old man, still having self-doubt. So it's a disease of old age and a disease of accomplishment. Self-doubt. The lack of confidence in yourself and in your abilities. And how it affects you. But I want to tell you this people of God. You are good enough. If nobody ever told you that I came to announce to you this morning. You are good. God wants to use you the way you are. And over time God will make you better than you are. What God showed you is possible. Stop writing yourself off. Stop excusing yourself. Stop belittling yourself. The reality is, you never know the true color of a tea bag until you put it in hot water. You never know what you carry until you find yourself in situations that will bring out your true potential. You are more than this. If there's anything I want you to leave this church with today is that you are more than this. Madam, you are more than a housewife. You are more than a mother. You are more than what they call you a professional, a banker. No, you are more than all of that. If all God has called you to this earth to do is to do what you are currently doing, I think it's an abuse of creation. Just wake up in the morning, wear tie, go to the bank, sit down, and be collecting teller. Teller. Next. Welcome to First Bank. Next. Thank you. I like that language. Thank you for banking with us. Have a nice day. Look, there's a banker laughing at me here. Next. That's life. Oh. Week in, week out. And the only reason you will not step out and pursue extra is because of the fear of not being good enough. If I leave this place to pursue the bigger picture, are you sure I will succeed? Well, that question is never answered in the place of comfort. You never get the answer to such matters in the place of comfort. You find such answers in deep waters. 
Potentials are not known. You never, never truly understand what potentials you have in God until you find yourself in places where those potentials are stretched to the max. I never knew God will be doing this. A service is going on now in my Tama. I'm going to catch them up. Another one will start in Lokogoma in October. We're hitting London. I never knew that all of this and many more that will be coming. I never knew that these things will be so. But the only thing I knew I could do was just take a step. Would you please be bold enough to take, just take one step. Thank you so very much. God bless you.